Hello everyone, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy and in this short tutorial I will show you how to make a frosty window in Blender Cycles. So let's jump straight into Blender. Here's an Arcvis scene I created before, so I'll just repurposed it and added some nice Christmas assets from the 3db.it store. You can check it out in the description below, there's a link and you can check out if you're in need of any 3D assets for your scene. Today we'll focus on the window and the glass shader for the window panes. So here's a node setup uh, that I created for the shader and I'll just break it down for you explaining every node and what it's doing and here's how the shader looks in the viewport. So let's go and add a light to make it even clearer. You can see there's uh, some frost and it's created with a mix of uh, photo texture with some procedural effects via the nodes and all is based around the principled shader playing with the inputs for each of the values. First of all, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled in the preferences, as it basically allows us a few nice features with nodes, uh, and the one I will use the most is uh, previewing the node in the viewport. Here's a little light hack part that I won't be covering here, is just to make lighting through the windows a little bit more efficient. And here's the main input source I will use for all the values. It's also input by a bump node to the normals to make the frost introduce some bumpiness to the whole shader. And here are like two strings of nodes. One is a procedural fall off texture and the other one down below is uh, plugging in the photo texture. So let's preview, for example, this gradient texture. Make sure you're in the look dev mode here. And with any node selected, just press Ctrl, Shift and left click. And this allows us uh, to preview the node through the viewer node. Well, you could just do that just manual, but the node wrangle does it for us uh, with a nice shortcut. So let's see if I change it to a linear. It's just a simple gradient, but I use the spherical one. And I also plugged it through a few nodes, uh, correcting the positioning of the texture. If I plug just straight the generated coordinates and change this texture to the spherical the gradient, and you can see it's kind of like a half of the sphere. So I just plugged it through a vector math node and corrected the positioning. Here you can see the values I came up with, but if I just wanted to center the sphere here, I would just subtract 0.5, which will move it to the center of the object. And I can manipulate each uh, X and Y, Z component of this. And I plugged the gradient texture through a color ramp just to be able to uh, easier manipulate the fall off of, of the texture and just to have a slider. It's kind of like more artist friendly. You can see there are a few types of the fall off. The B spline is uh, the milder one, but I finally used the cardinal. And the lower chain of nodes here is using uh, a photo texture from textures.com. I just made sure it's mapped with box mapping and then I mixed those two procedural and photo texture with a mix RGB node set to color dodge. But right now it's kind of simple like a sphere fall off which is not really what uh, goes on in nature. We need some variation and in order to introduce that we'll use a noise texture. Let's see how the noise texture looks like. It's just a random pattern. I'll also plug it into the generated coordinates to make sure they use the same positioning. I'll just mix it with the gradient texture using a mix RGB node, plug them both into that and then to the color ramp. Let's see how they blend. Oh, there's nothing to see here. So I'll change the mix to multiply and there you go. And I can use this color ramp to further tweak how they blend together. And also I can manipulate the positioning of my spherical texture. So maybe let's move it down a little bit. All right. And now I can also uh, play with the scale of the noise and other factors. If I just mix it simply like I did in the beginning, you can see that the pattern of the noise is kind of like independent of the photo texture and it's still bringing up this kind of procedural look. So I want to mix those two together in a more clever way and make them kind of interact together. So I'll blend them before plugging them into the color ramp and I'll use a math node to do that. And one uh, another problem that you might face with this noise texture is when you add the shader to a few different objects with that pane, which is the case here. I'm having a window that's built out of a few panels and they are all separate objects and while it's using the generated coordinates it's like repeating the same positioning to the procedural textures for all the objects and they make this repetitive pattern here. You can see the upper window also gets this thing stretched because the generated coordinates are applied according to the bounding box of the object so I can modify that 
by just like extruding a few vertices and making the outer boundaries of the object more square-like so that the texture is not that much stretched but generally this upper window should probably need some more tweaking here but to break down this repetitive effect i'll use an input node so let's go add an input node geometry and there you have an input that's called position well i could also use the object coordinates but you can see that some of these windows have the same object data so it's still repeating but if i use position like each of these um, window panels are positioned differently in the 3D space, so they are using different coordinates for each noise pattern. And you can see the repetition is already gone. So that's kind of what I was aiming for. And now to mix that photo texture with the noise pattern, I'll use a math node and I'll set it to subtract and I'll just subtract the photo texture from the noise texture. So you can see both the texture of the frost and the noise. And right now I'll just plug it into the multiply node here to mix it with the gradient fall off as well. And after plugging this into the color ramp again, you can see it kind of made this frost effect. So it's basically like stacking uh, different masks over one another and mixing them together cleverly just to create a more sophisticated and controllable mask. And I can control it in a few places, whether I want a more or less frosty window in the end. And I could even keyframe this value, for example, if I wanted to make an animation of frosty glass melting down or something like that. And right now I could get rid of this color dodge uh, node. It was mixing the procedural with the photo at the beginning, but right now I just made it before the color ramp. So maybe it's uh, better to just plug it straight out of the color ramp to the principal shader inputs. So I'll do that right now. And I'll also replug the principal shader. Let's see how it looks like in the end. Looking pretty cool. And now let's just clean up the node tree and frame a few sections here. Name it correctly with the frame option of the node wrangler, just to make things clearer for the future uses or just make the node tree a more readable. You can pause the video and watch the node setup how it finally was connected. And that's how the shader works in the real scenario in my scenes. I rendered them out on garagefarm.net, render farm service. If you're doing some paid work, it's definitely pays off, cuts off your render times, and it supports cycles, both CPU and GPU. So go check it out. There's free credits if you want to test out for yourself how it works. I hope you found the tutorial useful. Now go on and make your frosty windows and see you in the next tutorials from garagefarm.net academy.